Well, here we are in the woods, little gap of two weeks. Now, last time we spoke, Tony Whitbread, mm. you promised me something. You promised your viewers something. You promised a whole carpet of bluebells. I promised the carpet of bluebells, didn't I? That's two or three weeks ago. I was confident that what's actually happened, I wonder. Let's have a look. Well, there's quite a lot, but they look a bit Spartan, don't they? A bit scrubby. Mm. Am I being rude about no, the bluebells? I, I think that's that's fair. Yes, I, I would have expected them to be much more advanced by now. And the obvious thing that's happened since between when we last spoke and this time is no rain has happened. <laughs> and also it's been very cold. So I just look around here and I see it's, it's much drier, much more dusty than, than you'd expect in a, a wood. And bear in mind what I said before in some of these talks, the, um, uh, the, the species in our woodlands like spring, spring waterlogged soils, particularly things like wood and energy. They want, they, they want it nice and wet. They, they like clay, they like depth, they like moisture. But they haven't had any for nearly two months. So some of the things I'm seeing here, I'd, I'd expect more in the summer. So we've gone a bit floppy. Uh, some, of the, some of the lesser celandines are starting to go yellow. And I wouldn't have ever thought of it. Now, Felicity yet. has just joined us and said they still look lovely. We mustn't be negative. Let's not be too unpleasant about them. They're trying their best, aren't they? <laughs> <laughs> so they're not bad. They're not bad. And welcome to Caroline Pierce, who's just joined us. Well, I did promise a carpet of, of bluebells, and I think all we've got is a few rugs. Not, not really a carpet. Another, but not, an, yeah. another reason to keep coming back. But you are worried about this dry, aren't you? So where are we seeing the issue? I mean, even here, look. Yeah, yeah. And things here are a little bit crushed, I suppose, by being on the edge of the road. But even so, yeah, you'd expect them to be much more vibrant at this time of year. I mean, it's not too bad at the moment. I mean, look at, look at these bluebells. They're fantastic, really, aren't they? A little bit noddy. <laughs> They're start showing signs of being a bit, a bit dry. And this is the classic English bluebell. Um, nice, deep colour nodding slightly to one side and the anthers they're the dots in the middle there if you can see them just see if i can get you a bit closer yeah if you can see the anthers in the middle they're cream or kind of like yellow i suppose so that's the native bluebell the um spanish bluebell is bigger more boisterous it nods in every direction and also the anthers are bright bright blue rather than cream so this is our native bluebell and and do we have native bluebells in other countries in europe uh, yeah yes the that most of the bluebells, I think more than 50% are in this country. I think it's that's something like 60% are in this country. Bear in mind how big Europe is, <laughs> that's, that's a lot. Uh, but they do occur down the kind of western seaboard of Europe. What they don't like is too much heavy frost. They, that's why they like being in woods, because that protects them from the frost. Although here is quite exposed, so quite perhaps exposed. that's why they've been affected. But Jan Dillaway's joined, family from Norfolk, so yeah, yeah. hello to her. Um, well, look, I mean, they do look lovely up on that hill there. That's the sort of colour that I expect when we yeah. see the carpet. Yeah, yeah. And they're opening up, they're, they're getting out before the, um, before the trees form their canopy. So the leaves have been out for quite a while. They've been gathering energy and, uh, you know, going into the bulbs. And then the bluebells come out. And the bluebells will probably stay out, you know, even once the canopy forms because they've already got the energy in their bulbs. Apparently, well, you, you need to speak up, Jan no, says. Am I not speaking no, up? No, oh, that's dear. unusual, <laughs> isn't it? Yeah. Oh, lovely sight for a Sunday afternoon. Now we're just going to... This is, this is kind of fairly traditional management. And when the canopy opens up like this, it means the bluebells can lay down resources for a longer period. And then when the canopy forms again, all those bulbs will, will, will be full of energy once more. So bluebells, they're, they're responding to occasional opening up of the canopy. Uh, which is why they like coppice cycles. They, they like this, this sort of thing. You know, bluebells, daffodils are the same. They lay down the resources, not just early in the year, but actually when you get periods of canopy opening from, from coppicing. So, so that's rather nice. But uh, the other thing here, you can't quite see, but this time of year, what you can sometimes see is if you look at the shrubs rather than the tree canopy, the shrubs come into leaf before the trees. Now, they might be the same species, but they're coming into leaf before the trees. And this is a kind of response so that the shrubs can get a chance to photosynthesize before the canopy forms. So you can just about think over there is a bit of a birch or something, which is low down in the canopy, and it's coming into leaf before the oak trees above it. And you, 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 sometimes you can see that as a very obvious green line below the canopy of the trees. Now, on the way up here, we saw something hovering, didn't we? I don't think we're going to be lucky to see it live, but it was, it was like a bee, but it was also like a fly. Um, oh, I've just lost my sound. I hope that's not affecting the broadcast. Not had that before. 
Am I still on? Shall I talk for a little while? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Can can one of our lovely viewers, Pamela? Can you hear us? Can you hear us out there? Because I can't hear us, which is very strange. Um, Felicity was asking. Uh, they were finding it dry up here in Lancashire. We saw lots this week, but most ne near rivers or streams. And please, if somebody can hear us, actually, if Viv can can tell us if she can hear us or text to us. We don't know what we've Oh, said. Felicity, yes. Okay, thanks. Sorry, Caroline and Felicity for burbling on. <laughs> Apparently you can hear us. I just can't hear us ourselves. So that's very strange. That's um, now, what we were going to have a look at is there's an awful lot of green foliage yeah. coming up here and yeah. we've talked about this before haven't we, have, we yeah this is the dog's mercury again and this seems to be doing all right i think this might be adapted to drier conditions when you think this plant grows much more abundantly up on the downs it likes um it likes dry conditions basically it likes, likes calcareous or chalky soils uh, so it's unusual to find it this this much in the wheeled because we're on fairly acidic clay soils um, and i know that this is sticky willy because yes, you talked about right. that before didn't yeah, you we have. And that, yeah, oh, that's the, got a bit of a yeah, flower coming through, hasn't that's it? The, that's, the, that's as good as it gets. That is now the fruit. You know, we didn't even notice the flowers, but now it's kind of finished already. So, so that, that's just dog's mercury. And it shows the soil here has been disturbed, so you've got a little bit more, more lime mm. being exposed, and that's all come out. Yeah, right. Oh, down here we can see a bit of, um, a bit of wooden enemy. Looking a little bit sad, sorry for itself. There's patches of wooden enemy around here, and again, that's something that really likes. There's one there, isn't there? Yeah. That white flower there. Yeah, spring waterlogged soil. There we go. It's really wilting, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. And we were talking before. I wasn't sure about the sound um, about the hover. Yes. Hovering insect. It looked like a bee, but it was flying like a fly, and it seemed to be bringing up the dust underneath it. Mm. Yeah, that was, I think, a greater bee fly. So it is actually a fly. Right. It almost is a bee, a bee mimic. Huh. And it's a great long proboscis, so it's able to suck the nectar from plants. And there was a whole yeah. gang of them Just earlier on, yes. wasn't there? We, if we keep going down, we might see it. Meanwhile, I can see something else that's popping up out of the soil yeah, here. Is that, is that the next lot of hazel? Looking. This one here, here yeah. This one here, that's, yeah. um, that's elder. Elder? Yeah, yeah, that comes. There's several elder trees here. Which is coming out. Oh, we've got some town hall clock. There we are. Oh, yeah. Looking now a bit that, bigger now. That has some, some buds or flowers on yeah. it as well, hasn't That's it? That's the flowers. Getting, yeah, a lot bigger than when we last saw them. So this is coming out quite nicely. But this is the one that looks like it's got four faces of a town hall clock on each side. Oh, yeah. Let's just see you how see close I camera? can get. Just about. Just about. Yeah. That's just a nice little plant. Woodland plant. Uh, and does that have a Latin name? Yes, a Doxa Moscatellina. So some people call it Moscatel. Ah, that's right, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Never did Latin at school. <laughs> Nor did I. That probably means I pronounced it completely wrong, but you got the idea. I'm just seeing, we're walking down here because I'm waiting to see if we can see any violets so and what violets they were doing. But time, yeah. Um, they seem to be doing slightly better than a couple of weeks ago. I mean, are you surprised to see that the daffodils are still sort of hanging in? What happens when they get to this stage? Let's see if we can see it's one awesome. here nearby yet yeah, i'm surprised they've actually lasted this long because when you think about it we've had daffodils for nearly six weeks so these these are definitely gone over if you can get close on this you can see what's happened now is this one's obviously been pollinated and that's the seed pod that's forming behind the flower so this will grow and mature or dry out and mature and that, the seeds for next generation will be in there so the the bulbs will still be there obviously but this is the way they spread from the seeds wow. of this plant. Of this so plant. We, when we come back next year, they'll still be here. Absolutely, yes. Which yes. is fantastic to know. Um, let's see what I'm else we can find. Fern fronds coming out. So they like it wet, but they're certainly giving it a good go, aren't they? You see the way it uncurls. All these will grow out oh, into yeah. big ferns. I mean, there's no rain forecast at the moment, I is know, there? In fact, it's going to be sunny and hot this week. I don't know if it can get drier, can it? I don't think so, but I know the farmers are getting really worried about the lack of grass already. Yes. I expect to be um, you know, early bites of, of grass for cows and sheep, but uh, they're not getting some. And in France, they're worried about frost and wine yes. vineyards yes. going going we've, off. We've had consistent low temperatures, which is another thing the bluebells don't actually like very much. They seem to be okay here. But yeah, as I was saying, they, they live in areas where you don't get such cold winters, which is why they actually like Britain, because we've got an oceanic climate. But if you go down the west coast of Europe, you get bluebells in those sorts of areas as well. You don't get them further inland because um, 
a lot of Europe has, has a much colder nighttime temperatures than we have here. So given the weather, we're actually lucky to be seeing yeah. so many bluebells. Um, yeah. But they're, they're quite short as well, aren't they? I mean, usually yeah. I would expect them to be a bit taller than this. Yeah. But lovely colours. Look at that. Look at that. Beautiful. And they're not really blue, are they, Tony? Oh, Sorry to mention that. Bad, they're Do you bad. think they're... I think they look purple. <laughs> yeah, I suppose they're quite a deep colour, aren't they? But you look, there's loads of buds that haven't come out yet. They're not, hardly mentioned at all. Hardly come out at all. Look at this one here, for example. Loads of them are at this sort of stage. They're not, not really out yet. Which is great. It means we're going to get some... Um, um, going to get a nice nice sea of... of he, he predicts. A <laughs> nice sea of later <laughs> yeah, on. Yeah, that's what you're always telling yeah, us, yeah, isn't yeah. it? The honeysuckle is starting yeah. to look quite healthy, though. Yeah. Mm -hmm. When will that come out? I don't know. I think that's more of a summer type thing. It's coming into leaf now. It's the food mm. plant of uh, oh, some of the wooden butterflies like uh, White Admiral. I don't know whether we get White Admiral here. I've never seen a white admiral in this part of the world, but we just did see a butterfly on the way up, didn't yeah, we? Yeah, saw an orange tip, which are coming out. There's a there's a nice violet, common common dog violet. If you can see that there, it's nice nice blue colour. Colour varies actually. And I saw some further on, which were much deeper. But at the back of it, it's got a short spur, which tends to be lighter in colour, almost yellow. And Reinecker's joined um, Viv's sister from South Africa as oh. well, so it's a family affair today. Excellent. Um, and we hope that those of you watching on replay will get as much enjoyment as as we are from being in the woods and we will be seen we'll just let us stop for a second and see if we can hear any of the birds here i think what i can hear is mostly robins at the moment mostly robins a little bit of motorbike noise from the yeah. from the distance and people chattering along the path but we have heard, um, oh, that's a great tip. Sounds like a um, squeaky wheelbarrow wheel. That one. Got it. That's a great tip. We have got a, heard a chiff chaff as well that's been here, which makes a noise like a chiff chaff. And there was a green woodpecker yep. not so long ago, wasn't there? Pretty certain. But all these mosses on the trees. Yes, look how dry they are. That, that was really verdant when we started yeah. doing this, wasn't it? Yeah. I mean, is there any benefit? Is there good stuff about it being this dry? Gosh, I don't know. No, I don't, oh, I don't, think, it's, I don't think it's very good news. It's always a worry. But early in the year, sometimes even as early as February, is one of the time when you get the greatest fire risk because um, there's more dead material around, and if there isn't any rain, then it can actually create quite a fire risk. Not ten, doesn't tend to be much of a fire risk in woods, though. That's usually on heathland. Here we see a nice plant. Oh, are you meant yeah. to touch that? That looks that looks like it might be a nettle. No, it's not a nettle, no, not at all. It's not even related to nettle. That's the um, um, yellow archangel. Um, ah. And that's very small. I mean, that's, it grows much taller than that, but you can just about see the dots, which are kind of yellow, where the, um, where the flower's going to come out. And that'll be in the next, oh, probably week or two at least. Wow. So it grows much bigger than that. It's a lovely, if you imagine, a, do you know the white dead nettle? So it's like that, yes. but the, the flowers are bright yellow. So I would never have touched that because I thought I would have thought it was a nettle. <laughs> I don't know if we can see any nettles actually. So no. that's that's the archangel as well. Yes, then. that's the archangel. Wow. Yeah. You yeah, see, we've got some wood sorrel here, which is going yellow. Look at it. The flowers are kind of fallen over. And it's going yellow. So that's that's wood sorrel. It looks Bizarre, like a clover. Isn't it? Yeah. And I certainly wouldn't expect that to be going over yet. Well, we're trying not to end on a. <laughs> Certainly. On a dull, miserable note, because at least the bluebells are here and we've been able to see them. We are expecting more and we do hope for some better weather for them. Um, just before we leave, Tony, why are these bluebells very straight up? Yeah, they're just in bud. Is that what up. they start yeah, like? They because then they go into that, yeah. this, and they'll stretch where out a lot more and they get it's... heavy with the flowers, I yeah, suppose. Yeah. And we can't smell them yet because it's too early. It's a really nice calm day, so if they were out any more, we'd be able to smell them. But, uh, but no, they're not out that far now. I was just looking at the number of insects as well, because you, you asked if there's any, any benefit from dry weather, and some of the insects really do like um, warm, sunny glades. So it may be, uh, may be a good year for insects, I don't know. Some of the woodland butterflies, they don't often go through the middle of the wood, they like the, the glades, the clearing, which is why a coppice area like this is quite good. Because some of our woodland butterflies, many of our woodland butterflies, need these openings. You know, they like the warmth of the sun getting onto the ground and this kind of complexity of plant life that therefore evolves. So they like 
They like violets, for example, some of the fertility butterflies like violets, but not just any old violets. They've got to be in the warm, they've got to be in it just the right amount of vegetation structure, so not in tall vegetation, not in short vegetation, but something in the, in the middle with patches here, patches there. So they like this complexity. Um, so that's what you get when you get these openings. And that, so they're responding to, to the warmth. So I'm slightly worried about the lack of rain at the moment, but actually that's what a lot of these things in copper cycle respond to. They, they like the warmth coming down to ground level. So we might find lots more insects when we come back next time. Yeah, I'm not going to make any predictions now. <laughs> not anymore. <laughs> well, no, thank you for that. And, and bef we're going to close in a minute, unless anyone's got any questions. But um, on the way down, we'll see if we can see those um, bee flies. flies yes. Because I would like to try and get some imagery for you guys to see those. Um, just bef before we go, Tony's honing in here. Just more violet leaves. You see, once you get your eye and you see them everywhere. There's, there's a lot of violets here. It's a lovely shape, them, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, some of them are in flower, but most of them aren't. Well, I suppose what we need to do... Oh, what were you going to dive in on there? Yeah, I could I, see Tony about yeah, to dive. Little, little things. This is a wood speedwell. Oh, yeah. Yeah, which has nice blue flowers, which again, they, I, just, I thought they would have been out by now, but they're not. More violets here. So again, when you get down, you can start to see the detail. Regenerating bluebells just here. Little ones. Oh, right. Well, I just want to just check because I've got a potential bee sighting up here. Um... It may have gone by the time off. we get there. It's buzzed off. I love it, Tony. I love it. Right. It was here somewhere. It was here somewhere. Um, now, this is really live nature watch, isn't it? <laughs> this is where you have to have something pre-filmed, isn't it? Which is what I think we might have to do for you. No, um, can't see it now. Can't see it at all. But we are seeing lots of... <laughs> I'm not an entomologist, but there's loads of kind of insecty things flying around. I See, insecty things. Insect You're things. talking about insects like I talk about plants. <laughs> Plant thingies or insect thingies. Yeah. Right, so we're going to have to get somebody online next time who can do the insects for us as well. Yeah, don't know, that's a fly of some sort. <laughs> yeah, I don't think we're in your speciality no, here. Right, well, a bee fly is our mission on the way home then. So, but for now, Tony, I think we're going to have to say goodbye to everybody. Yeah, excellent. And uh, sorry there weren't more bluebells, but it was actually quite nice, wasn't it? And uh, that was a lovely day to get out in the woods. So thanks for joining me. We'll see you soon.